What's going on, everyone? And welcome to Movie Emporium's new review of The Addams Family 2, the sequel to the animated hit that once again is directed by Greg Tiernan and Conrad Vernon. Now, before we begin, if you like this channel, awesome. Hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. If you like any of the videos, awesome. Hit that like button as well as comment below on any video to watch, including this one. So The Addams Family 2 is the animated sequel to the pretty successful first movie that came out a couple years ago. Um, it's about our favorite kooky family and the misadventures they go on. But the ironic thing about these two movies is they've highly focused on Wednesday Adams' character as the main protagonist. Yes, we have Gomez and Morticia and Pugsley and, you know, Uncle Fester and Lurch and stuff like that. But mostly it's been about the journey of Wednesday Adams and her kind of rise through womanhood. <laughs> A lot of aspects, believe it or not. So this movie follows uh, Wednesday as she is trying to kind of journey through who she is, what she is, how she feels distant from her own family. And in the process, we have a character named Cyrus Strange who actually co-spears this uh, science fair that Wednesday's in. And he is trying to get her to come to his laboratory with the use of characters. One is actually voiced by Wallace Shawn, awesome enough. And he is trying to tell her that she's his daughter so she's not really an Adams. she's really a cyrus strange of the family and the whole mix up and stuff like that and so gomez's character feeling like he needs to reconnect with his daughter decides he's going to take the family on a, a road trip a vacation of sorts similar to like hotel transylvania in a lot of ways and so they go on this crazy adventure through the different you know horrifying areas like salem's law and you know sleepy hollow and death valley and it's basically the journey of Wednesday Adams trying to figure out who she is, trying to figure out how she feels distance from the Adams family himself, and uh, what it takes for an individual to come to the realization that the people that are around them are different, different than you. That's the way it's supposed to be. And how we respond to that, which is a kind of a potent statement, I guess you could say, is really kind of um, um, weird and interesting for a movie about weird and interesting people. And so watching this movie after pretty much lambasting the original animated movie that came out a couple years ago, it was something I can say I wasn't too looking forward to. Um, I'm such a huge fan of the Barry Sonnenfeld films and how like dark and deep and how poetic those films are and how they really truly focus on the family. Yes, Uncle Fester is the like the main focus, but there's a much interesting, more kind of uh, dichotomy to the characters and how they're developed that when you go into the anime movies and making them more kid friendly, so you have poop and fart jokes, you have, you know, just the insane nature that goes over the top of even who the Adams family are. It's just it really kind of put me off. And on top of that, I didn't think the script was very well written. You know, Conrad Vernon, who's known for directing stuff like Shrek and stuff like that. They really feel like they take these characters and they make them less weird and eerie and spooky than they should be. So with that said, I, it wasn't, I wasn't a fan of it. And so when the Adams Family 2 was announced literally like last year, a year after the original movie came out, I can't say that I was super excited for it. Um, I it just never felt like it needed a sequel, but it made a hundred million dollars, so it was going to get a sequel. But it happened so quickly, so the, the turnaround and just the use of animation, I'm sure they were able to do on the fly, or they had already been working on it. So with that said, um, I definitely think this movie is a, a much marked improvement because I think the characters are more focused. You know who these characters are. You know how they're presented. You know their tics and stuff like that. So leaning into a character like Wednesday Adams, you can get more into like the kind of soul of who she is and how she feels like she's dejected. You know, the other characters feel like they're cemently in place, especially like Pugsley Adams, who is looking for a love interest in this movie, but it's not really the key thing to this movie. It's about one person or a person trying to find their identity in a world where they feel out of place. And that's very much a teenager thing, a very much a young kid thing where their parents seem so alienated from who they think they are. That it, it takes almost to when you go to college to, for you to truly realize that your family is your family and they, as weird and kooky as they are, they are who they are and you kind of grow into that. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, it's not a perfect film at all. It does the food, poop and fart jokes. It gets a little, a little tedium and tedious when it comes to the, the comedy and the jokes and it plays to, you know, particular tropes that I'm not a big fan of when it comes to, you know, how the characters place and so on and so forth. The idea of having like 
this lawyer and this big lurch guy, the lawyer, of course, is voiced by Wallace Shawn. Um, in this movie, is just it doesn't really go anywhere. And then the the Cyrus Strange character is just he is what he is. You know how his character is going to play out. It's it's such a well worn trope in a lot of aspects. That I saw it coming, but I think the characters themselves, I think the Adams family themselves are uh, they're more well written, they're more well developed, they're more you know socially uh, interesting than they were in the first movie because they're taken out of their elements. They are given a chance to kind of expand about who they are. And I think the that's what the appeal of the Adams family are is, you know, to be different, to be strange, but to be who you are. And that's what makes them so appealing in the long run. And the one thing I could never complain about, the one thing I always find really interesting is the voice work in these two movies, Adams Family and Adams Family 2, are extremely strong. They're the best parts of the movie. They actually make the movie work better than they should um, because you have people like Oscar Isaac playing Gomez. You have Charlie Theron. You have Chloe Grace Moretz, Nick Kroll, uh, Snoop Dogg, which is really strange to have him play Cousin It, but, you know, it worked. Uh, Bette Midler, uh, Conrad Vernon, the director, plays, of course, uh, the Lurch character, and then Bill Hader plays Cyrus Strange. It's it's a it's a it's like a riches type of thing where you have all these great actors doing great dimensional work and it's just the movie itself. It's just the movie is not as strong as the character voice work and I really get a sense that even though these famous actors are in these roles, you can't really tell. They they do a nice job of covering up who they are and I give a lot of credit to that. So I I have to give a shout out to the actors and like I said, they're very strong in what they do. They give nice voice to the animated actor or the animated characters. And you can't complain about that. That's always a nice thing. So, but um, I still can't really get on board with this you know, this iteration of the Adams family because I just feel like it's a little too cartoony for my taste, a little too kid friendly for my taste. Um, there are some dark moments in here, which you know is perfectly fine. But I think the Barry Sonnenfeld franchise versions of Adams Family are much more well realized, much more interesting. Go to the places like the TV show did, and I'm hoping the Tim Burton Wednesday series, which once again focuses on Wednesday, I think this is going to become a pattern. Um, might be more interesting, more entertaining, just for the look and feel of what Tim Burton is known for. But I think overall, I think if you like the first movie, I think you'll like the second movie. I think if you have to find a movie for kids to go to for an hour and 30 minutes, I think this is perfect because it has just the right amount of humor for kids, just the right amount of humor for adults. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of really uh, kind of funny humor with like the horror franchises of the past, you know, the 80s, 90s, Michael Myers and stuff like that. They're, they used the Ace of Spades from uh, Motorhead, which was really interesting. I thought that was kind of uh, not what I was expecting. But it's still a movie I think will divert kids. I think they'll have fun with it. And you'll probably get some of the humor in it. So, so with that said, it's not the not the worst of the two, but it's definitely not a great film. But I think it, it definitely improves. And I think if they do a third one, I think they could really hit the nail on the head when it comes to this franchise. So um, with that said, I think that'll do it. I think that'll be my take on The Adams Family 2. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, in the comments below, what is your take on The Adams Family franchise? What is your favorite Adams Family film? Do you like these animated movies? Uh, all that good stuff. But otherwise, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find out coming next. If you like any of these reviews, awesome. Hit that like button and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.